Welcome to our lesson about dimensions. We've worked with many types of dimensions prior to this lesson. Dimensions refer to the size and other specifications of the objects in your work. While you were drawing, you determined the size of your objects, their length, their width, their radius, etc. In AutoCAD, dimensions are placed as annotations, that is, showing the dimensions on your output files. When you place dimension annotations in your drawings, you need to think about how it's going to appear on paper or your output file, the scale, where to put the annotations, the font size, color, etc. Placing dimensions is straightforward, provided you've used object snaps correctly when creating your drawing. The Dimensions tool is located on the Annotate tab, Dimensions panel. If you don't see it, right-click anywhere on the ribbon and make sure you've got both the Annotate tab displayed as well as the Dimensions panel under Panels. Both are checked when they're visible. The Dimension command is located right here. It's got a downward pointing arrow with a submenu of dimension types. The last type of dimension you used is pre-selected. In my case, I last used ordinate dimensioning, and that's what's pre-selected here, as you see by the icon. We can display many types of dimensions, as you see linear, aligned, angular, and then for curved segments, arc length, radius and diameter, and finally jogged and ordinate dimensions. Jog dimensions, this is when the radius of your circle, let's say, is off the layout and can't be displayed in its true location. The origin point is placed at a more convenient location. We're going to be talking about this later on. Ordinate dimensions, these measure the distance from an origin point. Let's say you've started a row of columns, you can measure the distance of each from the origin column to help prevent errors and maintain accurate offsets. First, let's learn how to place linear dimensions. The linear image is now displayed for the tool icon. And the command line asks us to specify the origin of the first extension line. We'll see what this looks like when we get a dimension on the screen or select an object. Let's press Enter. This enables us to make a selection in the graphic area. Now let's select the line and move the cursor. The direction you drag determines where the dimension will be placed. We place it with a left click. Linear dimensions use only the horizontal or vertical component of the location or object that you specify. If your line's at an angle, a linear dimension gives you just the horizontal or the vertical distance between the two points. To delete a dimension, just select it and press Delete. By the way, while you're dimensioning, it's a good idea to keep object snap toggled on. Let's activate the dimension tool again. Enter to select an object. And let's make our selection, this line here. Depending upon which way we drag, we're going to see either the vertical or the horizontal dimension. Left-click to position the dimension. Let's repeat the dimension. Press Enter so we can select an entity in the drawing area. And let's place the horizontal dimension now. Our first dimension of this line was the vertical distance of the line. The second dimension was the horizontal distance between the two points. Let's say you want to dimension the true length of the line, or create a dimension that's parallel to the line itself. These are called aligned dimensions, and that's a different dimension type. It's the second dimension available in the Dimension submenu. Let's press Enter to enable object selection. Now we'll select this line here. And let's drag until we want to position the dimension, and then left-click to place it. In an aligned dimension, the dimension line will be parallel to the extension line origin or basically parallel to the line itself. Let's select another line and place an aligned dimension. Now this dimension looks just like a linear dimension. Well, that's because the line I dimensioned is a horizontal line. The next dimension we're going to look at is an angular dimension. The command line asks us to select an arc, circle, line, or vertex. Let's make our selections in the drawing area. We'll select this line here. And our second line. Now drag and then left-click to position the dimension. Activate the tool again. This time we'll select the arc. And let's drag to position, left-click to place. Let's review how to dimension circular segments now. The next dimension we're going to use is arc length. I'll select this arc. I'll place the dimension right about here. Let's zoom all. Note the symbol indicating this dimension. This represents arc length rather than a chord length. Let's select the dimension and delete it. Now grab one of the handles and let's reposition this dimension. 
and let's zoom to fit. Arc length is like an aligned dimension of an arc segment. The next dimension we're going to look at is the radius dimension. We're prompted to select an arc or circle. Let's select this circle, and let's place the dimension right about here. Left click to position it. Now let's look at the diameter dimension type. We select an arc or circle to dimension, and let's place our dimension about here. Notice the symbol for the diameter. The R stands for radius. The content of your dimensions, the text and measurements, the angle of the text, or the angle of the dimension line, the weight of the lines and arrows, etc., all of this can be modified, and we're going to learn about this in our next couple of lessons on dimensions. Let's save our work and close this file. And this concludes our first lesson about working with dimensions.